Good evening, everyone, and welcome to an edition of Spanning the Need. I'm your host, Anthony Spano. Tonight, we're going to talk about art. Totally different subject, but in art education, as well as just to have some fun and see what's really out there. And we're here with Ray Simon, art, art dealer, art collector, and just an artist and a great guy all around. Ray, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And we talk to the fans a lot. <laughs> People may not understand. Um, you've been doing this your whole life. Correct. And, yep. and and you've been had some great projects that have been out there that are in presidential libraries, art institutes, and just all around, all over the world. Talk a little bit about your background so people kind of understand where you came from, how you started. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. And again, you know, in life, I've, I've always been a firm believer in from. Art school at Ursula and Sister Alice Morley, who was so influential, <clears throat> who looked at my mother and said, if you don't send your son to art school, I'll make sure St. Peter's don't let you in the to heaven. <laughs> and my mother was, if Fred Sanford had a sister, Anthony, it would be my mother. Trust me. And the only thing that she put her head down to were priests and nuns. But I've been doing artwork my whole life um, since I was five years old, and I just never stopped. And I think as I grew older, when I was a freshman at Ursula and Sister Oswee Morley got me accepted into Youngstown State University as a freshman in high school. <clears throat> but she always stressed one thing. She always said, celebrate the art within you, not you within the art. Mm -hmm. And I think that every one of these paintings that I've done, that I've been privileged to do, aren't about Ray Simon. Mm -hmm. They're about those who allowed Ray Simon to be Ray Simon, those who allowed Anthony Spano to be Anthony Spano, those who allowed your viewers to be our viewers, mm -hmm. people who who really made tremendous impacts in in humanity and nothing and I, I you know I, I love America and <clears throat> that's why you see a painting that's in the George Washington presidential library the Lincoln presidential library but it tells beautiful stories and we're all none of us are perfect we all have imperfections we all have omissions but and all these people that we paint that I painted have omissions but if you look at you know you've heard the old saying Anthony you never see you all behind the hearse yeah, and the buildings in the cemetery aren't storage units because the only thing that God allows they're mausoleums. The only thing that right. God allows you to take with you are the lives you touch, good and bad. Yeah, and, that's and it. No, no material stuff. No, 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 nothing. But lives you touch transcends into the afterlife. And, and we hope we can touch other people's <clears throat> lives in a variety of different ways, all for good. No matter if it's just giving them some a little kind of hey little bump on the sure on the fist and say, hey, yeah, you're, you're great, or don't worry about a variety of different things, but just what's in front of you. Right. And, and, that, and that's one thing that you've been very fortunate about, because we'd be off camera, we we're talking about that your mom or your teacher at Ursuline called Dr. Zona. Right. Dr. Zona, as, as many people may not know, has been the director or executive director of the Butler Art Institute, which is a gem in the Mahoning Valley. Um, and he's been the he was at YSU. Now for, he's at the Butler. He's at the Butler, running the Butler for many years. A man with a lot of knowledge. Oh, he's you know what? It, I was so blessed because I grew up in an era where my brother is, is a beautiful artist. He has a master's degree. And he's he was a principal. Mm -hmm. But him and Dr. Zona were friends. They all grew up at the same time. Yeah. And I looked up to those as a kid growing up on the north side of Youngstown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm, I'm so blessed where because it was, we were Fat Albert before Fat Albert was fat. <laughs> and I mean, it's, we, we were all mixed. Right. But but I admired people like my brother, Pat, was a great inspiration, Dr. Zona, mm -hmm. Al Orr, these people, um, um, Nebrezna, Al Nebrezna, right. these are the people that I looked up to and said, wow, these guys are just all that, right? And, I mean, it, and it just helped you really gear into art. Well, it just, it, they were an inspiration. Were you? Did you have that talent, like when you were young, or or did you? Because I know some people are just very art artistic. Like they can just don't need more education. They they just do what they do. Um, I could tell you when I was five years old. I remember I was over my aunt Alice Rowan's house, and I could tell you that I was in the basement, five years old, and I remember my aunt Alice screaming to my mother, <laughs> and I drew this big bowl of fruit at five years old that looked like the bowl of fruit. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know, you know, you don't know it. I you just, just, you're whatever you see, you drew. Right, exactly. And um, that that was, you know, and I, I haven't stopped 
when I was in kindergarten at Harding, the teacher had me teach art class at, at, at kindergarten to, to the students how to do a barn in 3D. My mother would send me to the butler at five years old in the basement to do art class. Well, and the butler is a, a great asset to this community, and, and they still have, I mean, I've attended collectors uh, events and just a lot of different events. So if you ever get time, go down to the Butler Art Institute in downtown Youngstown, no matter where you're from. It's a great commodity, great gem. It's actually was one of the very first art. It was the first American art museum in the country. Yes. By, by the Butler family. And I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of beautiful things in Youngstown and, and you know I I'm knock on wood. I'm I have a long way to go as an artist, but I've done work all over the country. Over in Europe I'm working on a piece of artwork of telling stories and I think that's what Anthony that's what opens up a lot of the doors like the current one I'm doing for the Pro Football Hall of Fame mm -hmm. 1946 the first four black yeah. players to enter the league the Cleveland Rams and the Cleveland Browns the Rams were in Cleveland yeah people don't realize that like if you look back at at Cleveland in general the other Cleveland moved to Cincinnati because Paul Brown went there exactly so you, you kind of run into it like yeah Paul Brown started the Browns right but then he started coaching at Cincinnati, and I don't think people realize because Paul Brown Stadium is in Cincinnati, yeah. Ohio. Right. And I think some people don't know. Art Modell came in. Art Paul Modell, Brown came yeah, in. yeah. Paul Brown moved, opened up a team in, in Cincinnati and became the Bengals. And, but there's so much history, and every one of my paintings that, that I've done tell beautiful stories about us, mm -hmm. it, you know, about all of us. And, you know, I, I've always said I hate hate, and I'm passionate about being compassionate. Mm -hmm. And I think the sooner that we all look at our and own our mistakes and take ownership of our mistakes as humans, and we join together to correct those mistakes as humans, right. all together we form a special bond. And you know, all these paintings tell beautiful stories about overcoming at times insurmountable challenges. I mean. If you look at what Lincoln went through in the, in the mm -hmm. Civil War, um, the story of Jim Brown and, and, and Muhammad Ali and Bill Willis, the 1967 summit where they, yeah. you see, this is what we, there's the stories, Anthony, that we don't understand with this painting here. And it was presented to Jim Brown by Muhammad Ali while he was still living. Um, Bruce Zolden took me down and commissioned the piece. And it was presented to, to Jim Brown. But this is what we don't know. In 1967, these two gentlemen, despite whether you agree with it or not. Let's show this because we've been talking a lot about this. So at least people understand what we're talking about. So this is this is the this is the uh, portrait of Jim Brown, Muhammad Ali that you did. So talk a little bit about this. 1967. Well, what what I we presented this to Jim Brown when Muhammad Ali presented the humanitarian award to him for the work he does. He's doing in the inner city. Mm -hmm. For children, if you look in the foreground, you see the two athletes right when they broke into their prime at mm -hmm. the beginning of, of why they became great. Right in the middle of the painting, you see them in the midst of their career standing up for what they believe in 1967. They didn't agree with the, the war in Vietnam, mm -hmm. so a lot of people did. No, a lot of people did not the Vietnam War. So, both Jim Brown, Bill Willis, and Muhammad Ali went to the summit in Cleveland, Ohio. And they stood up for what they believed in. And what, this is what's what's paramount. This is what's important. It cost them million, personally millions of dollars. You remember, the old, remember the old adage, Anthony, only the dead fish swim at the stream? Mm -hmm. Okay. Those guys weren't dead fish. It cost them millions of dollars personally standing up for what they believed in. And that's why if you look in the very subtly ghosted, you see a thumbprint uh -huh. right there. Right. Well, the Sikorsky crystal that Muhammad Ali presented to Jim Brown is, is Ali's thumbprint in a Sikorsky crystal. Interesting. And you see it where they first met at the, well, not first met, where they joined at the, the summit. at the summit. Interesting. And you remember the quote by Dr. Martin Luther King where he said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where they stand in times of comfort, but where they stand in moments of great challenge and controversy. Mm hmm that's why this painting he was Martin Luther King Jr. was very good at quotes. He was just you know, that's one of my huge I love Dr. King. Yeah. He was just a beautiful, inspirational before his time. And how many just out of curiosity, how many have you been sanctioned to do? 
or maybe sanction is not the right word, but the house of okay. paintings, yeah, well, it's probably five over five. I mean, you know, I have one, two, three, four in the Hall of Fame, and all that, and all that, and six bucks gets you a Starbucks coffee. So, yeah, because I remember my football coach saying that it's not about race sign. I'm a, I'm irrelevant. I'm blessed to do paintings for those who enable me to do paintings. But I've done a, paintings for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I've done paintings for the Washington Library, the Lincoln Library. I had paintings on display at the National oh, Archives. Oh, this is one that's in, in the Abraham Lincoln Library, correct? With an audio file. Yeah, with, so so this one is Abraham Lincoln. So explain this one because just, just so everyone's aware, this is hanging in the Abraham Lincoln in Illinois, I think. Springfield, Illinois. Springfield, Illinois. So explain this because we talked briefly about that it's just not a picture. There's a story behind it. Like it's not. Oh, I'm just going to draw this. It's right. you had an actual passionate story behind each one. Correct. So talk a little bit about this, and so it gives people the idea how you kind of come together with what you're doing. The uh, the underwriters of these paintings are, are huge. They're wealthy underwriters. They're huge donors to the library, and they sent me down to the Lincoln and the Washington Library for over a month. To work with the curators, this in case, this case, Dr. Ian Hunt. Start over, like um, I, I, the underwriter. The underwriter um, sent me down to to learn to tell the story. The Dr. Ian Hunt, the curator, said, "Ray, you just didn't do a portrait of, of Lincoln's life, uh, mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln, like many other artists. You did a portrait of his life." So I painted Abraham Lincoln sitting at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial reading to multiracial children, mm -hmm. one of them being his son, Tad, Anthony. Mm -hmm. The tallest child is biracial, mm -hmm. representing his growing understanding that we're all the same and how far we need to go to achieve Lincoln's dreams. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about um, what's going on in the world right now, and you've been doing probably painting after painting after painting. Well, in the last year and a half, we've been through a pandemic. That's right. What have you kind of been doing during the pandemic? I mean, because no one's been able to go anywhere. I'm, so it's kind of one of those things is saying, hey, I'm at home. I'm just going to start painting it. Is that what you did? Or, or I'm working on a huge project in Andrews, Texas, West Texas. Mm -hmm. And it probably, in my opinion, some of the panels, you saw one of them downstairs. Yeah, we, we were we were going and, and here's some video clips of, of that painting that you were going to right. talk a little bit about one, that. There's, each, there's, seven, there's 14 panels that are 10 feet wide by by eight feet tall and mm -hmm. what I paint them here and then we scan them in high res and we send them to Canada. They make 10 by 10 inch porcelain tiles out of them mm -hmm. so they never fade right. and they inset them into granite walls. So they're doing a huge legacy park in West Texas. The first seven walls are, are about embracing the theme and I can email you the theme if you yeah. want to show the viewers. It has a young girl running down the path holding a flag celebrating Civil liberties and freedom, mm -hmm. and it just the it's the, the American spirit despite her mistakes. Right. So, so all that being said, then the, each one is is each department, the fire department, and, and the police, the sheriff, and, and then the second seventy foot of the wall is the history of, and that's where, you know, I did the pencil. You got to see the. I'll, you it, sounds, to, it sounds like you kind of have a like you get a little giddy, giddy giddy when you talk. About oh, that. because you got that smile. You're like you're like a little kid. Like oh, I like. Well, this Certain painting, projects do. It, it, you know, I love doing paintings. I'm really passionate about about talking about our mistakes and where we came from, the racial divide, and how each generation we blend mm -hmm. and we blend and we grow closer to the communal line of maturity the way mm -hmm. God intended. When I see biracial couples or mixed couples, I celebrate. That's each generation we're blending, mm -hmm. and that's beautiful. That's what we're supposed to do. And, and that's what that painting, it, it, it just embraces, it, it, as it embraces the, the humanity as a whole, despite, despite where, what we are. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we, we look at a lot of these different projects, and um, you've done several for the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Actually, we, we were looking at one, this one right here has a lot of signatures on it. Talk a little bit about this picture. This is the 40th anniversary. You, know, you, want, a, you want a funny story? So, oh, this ought to be good. So the Pro Football Hall of Fame commissions me to do the 40th anniversary, and they flew every living Hall of Famer to Canton, kept the press out, 
in the big conference room at the Marriott in Canton. And we sat, I was with them. I sat next to Franco Harris and I've been friends. I'm not talking yeah. names. We no, no, you're for, fine. He bought the original Tuskegee Airmen painting that I did that's down in Tuskegee, Alabama, because his parents met in Ramalla, Italy. Oh wow. How about that? That's why he's his, his that's why he's biracial. Mm -hmm. But so so and, and it's five feet by you know it's about it's, almost bigger than this. Oh, it's bigger than that. that. Yeah. But it tells a beautiful story about the Tuskegee Airmen. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I'm sitting next to Franco Harris, Mean Joe Green, Jim Kelly, Joe Namath, and I'm signing because I'm the artist. So mm -hmm. they, the, 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 we've signed 500 prints because each Hall of Famer got a print, which is worth a lot of money mm -hmm. each for their own personal charities. Mm -hmm. And the Hall of Fame got print the originals in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. So they had college girls bringing stacks around. Mm -hmm. So Lawrence Taylor shows up about half hour late, sweating like whatever, whatever he was doing, yeah. who knows. And he sat down in front and everybody's working, signing the now they're bringing drinks and food. Right. And so Lawrence Taylor signs like 10 of them and he goes, I ain't signing these. And Joe, <laughs> Joe Green, yeah, they were, the tables were like, when you were in school, like lunchroom, you know, yeah. rows of tables. Right. Joe Green stood up and he said, sit your ass down and you better sign those mother uh, <laughs> uh, or I'm going to jump over this table and beat your MF. I mean, oh, boy. Oh, and, 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 and it got really heated for a moment. Yeah. And, and I'm just telling you, Joe Green is. He's a big guy. A big Sasquatch call, Bigfoot call, yeah. right? He's huge. So just then Mike Dicker gets up, his face turned as red as your cup. He's in the same row that Lawrence Taylor's mm -hmm. in, and he walks up, Anthony, about this far from his nose, and whispers something in his ear. And his, you could, if you could feel pure Lawrence Taylor in Lawrence Taylor's his ear, ear right? If, in Mike Dick, if you could, you, you could feel the ink that just right. Mike Dick, you could just feel right. Feel right. It. Lawrence Taylor looked at Mike Dick, put his head down, sat down, and sighed. So. Yeah, those are the interesting stories. But yeah, the, the, this this was for the 40th anniversary. Now we're working on one. Right now, this is interesting, and this is new news about most people don't realize. The Pro Football Hall of Fame. I met with with Dave um, David Brown uh, and the whole staff, the new CEO mm -hmm. of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They've just become the National Black College Hall of Fame. Oh wow. So now they're taking everything's going to be under one roof. Well, they they, they want to embrace because here's what happened when all the football players um, play for Grambling and all the, the black colleges. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as in 1946 when they started when they started going into college football, right? Those black colleges really suffered because all the talent was going to mm -hmm. Alabama was go, you know was going to all those different schools. Yeah, the the the, the bigger schools mm -hmm. normally didn't allow black players to play so everything will now be transferred to canton ohio right down the road right so so we're doing a, a a beautiful rendering of the first four black players that came into the league two of them went to the cleveland rams two of them went to the cleveland browns marion motley and mm -hmm. and 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 so so but what i did is i drew the cleveland municipal stadium blending the old into the one Anaheim, Anaheim coliseum Oh, wow. And this was interesting. So the Cleveland Rams in 1946 win the national championship. They moved to Los Angeles. Yeah. The Coliseum tells the Cleveland Rams, your players can't play here because only whites are allowed to play in this stadium. So, so a news, a black news reporter goes in front of the commissioners and says, how can you do this when this stadium was built by it? All of our money's Hispanic, mm -hmm. Mexican, Black, White. Right. All of our money's built the stadium. Mm -hmm. And how can you designate that the stadiums that, that Black people can't play it when it was everybody's money who lives in this community? Right. So he, over time, he overturned that whole ruling mm -hmm. and the whole league. So what I did in the painting is I have old municipal stadium blending into the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. In the scoreboard of the Coliseum, I have the the reporter who changed the tide and went in front of the commission right. and changed the tide and opened up the league and i have the four i have images in the foreground of the four players you know and then i have them in the background walking up from the tunnel mm -hmm. all holding hands 
with this beautiful new horizon, right. the NFL logo ghosted, walking into a new day in National yeah. Football League future, and ghosted in the sky. You have you have a white hand handing the ball off to a set of black hands. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So it just it just captures the spirit and 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 what we overcame, the yeah. mistakes we've made. Well, I mean, we we look at. Let me ask you this: Out of everything you've done, and we'll, there's a couple more we'll get to real quick. What is probably one of your best ones that you felt connected to or that you have just loved over the years? Not, you know, I have a long way to go, so it's hard. I never really hung up my artwork until the last three years because it's like when I'm done, I'm done. But the one that I really enjoyed the most was the one that Denise de Bartlow York underwrote that's was in St. Paul's Cathedral. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And it's because the painting that you saw, it's, it's, yeah. it's powerful. Yeah, it is a very powerful, yeah. and we'll show it to you here shortly. It's uh, The title is in an Aram is in Aramaic. In fact, the woman just called, she's purchasing one out in, in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, a large one this size. With the, in the in Bishop Murray. Uh, great, and great man. Beautiful man. And uh, uh, Father close. Edward I Noga. Very, I was very close to Bishop Murray. He was a beautiful. He Noga. loved this painting. He, I still have his voicemail. I should play it for you. He says, Ray, I just love how you always address the racial divide in the yeah, painting. He, Bishop Murray was a smart man. People didn't know. He was like a doctor. Or he had a Brilliant. like a he, boy law degree. Uh, I think he had a couple math. I mean, he was very educated. He was a great I was praying Anthony that he'd be Cardinal Murray and oh, that, oh that'd be nice. You know, ben I was, Pope, ben Pope, yeah. he was just he was he was he was that man. Yeah. He was that we were so blessed. And uh he helped actually write the theological when I first showed the painting mm -hmm. to Bishop Murray and, and Denisa, um underwrote the production of the costume. Right. We had models, we had but um I thought he was going to hang me because the loincloth of Christ was was made on the painting of world currency, the yen, the pound, the mm -hmm. mark that talks about the story. And he was going to he was going to get you. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, in the blood of Christ cleansing the right. loincloth made of world currency. But right. this is Ray. He goes, what you have painted here is the center of our faith. So right. Bishop Mur so Bishop Murray and and Father Noga and several other priests um, got together and they wrote a theological interpretation that now has become a catechistical teaching tool. What they do is they sit the painting up in front of sixth graders in mm -hmm. churches, and they and before they show their interpretation, mm -hmm. in that painting is the creation, the trinity, mm -hmm. the cleansing of the temple, the baptism, the crucifixion, the ascension. And, I, and I'd like to share. So all of that... Bishop Murray says, Ray, what you painted here is the center of Christianity. I mean, the most important stories mm -hmm. of, you know, people don't realize that the crucifixion is an important story, right. but what's, what's more important than the crucifixion is the ascension. Right. Because, I mean, you know, there's over 500 documented stories from, from, from history, from of accounts of people seeing Christ, whether, mm -hmm. and, and when they had people who aren't even religious, who are from Scotland Yard saying, right. this many statements right. couldn't be fabricated in that time well there's a gentleman he wrote the book cold cold case christianity j warner walls who i who will be interviewing in the coming weeks talked about how he was a homicide detective and in um was not christian was raised in a house non non-christian non-catholic was a homicide direct uh detective for 20 some years in la been on numerous TVs doing homicide. He actually studied the book, the Bible, Matthew, John, from a detective from view. From a detective view, right? And it's called Cold Case Christianity, which it's a he best was set. featured on the History yes. Channel because that's where I watched the special. They he was one of the detectives mm -hmm. who viewed Christianity from strictly an investigative, correct, and was not Christian, right? Exactly, and then because he was they converted, candidate. or he was a. Um, Right. I can never do that. But yeah, so we will be interviewing him and sitting down and talking to him about how he came about and everything like that. So stay tuned for that. In but that painting that Denise underwrote, and you know, I've always, she's such a, she is a beautiful, beautiful, I, I told Denise, when, every time I see her, I said, you know what, Denise, 
out. You never see a U-Haul behind the hearse or nothing. Yeah. The only thing you take with you in the life she touched it, I says, and you are going to need a train that stretches around the world because you not only touch people's touched lives people. by not only employing them, blessing them. She donates money every single every time I go to her office, the Anthony, mm -hmm. there's a line. I said, not only you bless them, you bless their children. Their yeah. children become doctors, lawyers, engineers. She's yeah. she's a, she's she's, a, 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 it, she's been very fortunate to to be very giving. That's what she she says, Ray. I'm I'm blessed to be able to do. Yeah. But that painting that 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 I did, I think that um, that painting, that vision came. I'm, believe me, I'm not. I'm a North Side kid. Hardest ten hard ten hardest years of my life, Anthony, was third grade. But I'm joking. But that painting came in a, in a dream, and it was just haunting me for years. Interesting. Well, we, we talk about you've done a lot of projects in over your life. Mm -hmm. What are you working on now that, um, or that you've kind of been working on in the last year because we're kind of in the pandemic? And a lot of, I mean, like, I was at home mm -hmm. for the last year and a half. Uh, everyone was at home. So what kind of projects were you working on or that are kind of in the, Works now in the beginning. Phase. Exciting one. Um, oh, I worked on Texas. I still have. Mm -hmm. We uh, saw a little bit earlier. Yeah, the, the, a lot of pianos, and one of the stories is right. awesome. But and I and, and I will email you the most powerful story. But all that, then I get a call from uh, JJ Cafaro, mm -hmm. who I've done several paintings for. I was, you know, when I was a little kid, we used to practice Pasarelli Brothers in, in, behind their building on Belmont. Yeah. And we used to, and Jay was, he, he was friends with my sister, his wife's friends with my sister. And we used to go to his office and we were so cool. It was so cool hanging out in mm -hmm. JJ's office because he had bottled water before water was bottled. So now that being said, so he calls me up and he, he's been friends with President Trump since the 70s. Mm -hmm. And he says, Ray, I want you to do a painting for Donald. Mm -hmm. So I did a painting for President Trump. And when I, he saw the layout, and it really tells a positive story about President Trump. Mm -hmm. There's positive things about every every one of us, and it, it, it tells what he accomplished. In, in, in and actually, this is it right here. We can actually take this. This is a is it is this a mock up or is this is a canvas? Okay, right here. The title is The Awakening. Okay, the best is yet to come. So how long? So how long did it take you to do something like this? To four weeks. Actually, the face faces are easy to do. Mm -hmm. Faces aren't challenging at all. Everybody's okay. face is the same. This here took me a week and a half, almost two, almost two weeks, just the building because that's why my daughter ha bought me the Bob Ross yeah. statues. Yeah. Because I, what he Bob Ross does easy, like flowers and stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a challenge doing. But all that being said. You know, if you look ghosted in the background, you see the very subtle and somber, somber blue, the face looking down in prayer. Mm -hmm. Very subtle. To the right, you see very subtle, the face okay. looking to the future. You know, the title is The Awakening, The Best is Yet to Come, because he is going to run again. Mm -hmm. And it just tells, when J.J. came to the house to look at the original painting that's five and a half feet tall. Yeah, it's it's it's... Bigger, almost about the same size or bigger than this. And so, so he calls, JJ calls me up on a Saturday and says, Ray, I'm sitting with Donald. He calls him Donald. Mm -hmm. And he's in tears about the Lone Eagle. What I wrote about the Lone Eagle is many times throughout, you know, they came after him from day one. Mm -hmm. And there's, I think there's so much more behind all of it. And it all goes down to the things you can take with you in the afterlife money. See, we, we think we can take money. So, you can't take anything. Exactly. You, you can only take your mind and who the people you touch. Exactly. But there, I think there's. they were after him from the minute he walked down the escalator. So I, the Lone Eagle soaring because many times he went up against insurmountable challenges, overcoming them. Mm -hmm. Many times he stood alone. What I wrote in the certificate that tells the story is, Anthony, I wrote, malevolent forces will have their moments in time as surely as evil will inherently topple itself. Mm -hmm. God's immutable governing power will always right what is wrong in the end. President Trump held this vision as sacred. Well, we, we talk about the in politics aside, or um, we don't get into politics here. So uh, real quick, well, we're launching this off on Amazon okay. in about eight days. We have 16 by 20 prints, red, white, and blue mats. We're doing mugs. So you can go to Amazon and get this now. Not and, yet. Oh, yeah, you can get it now. Okay. 
You didn't now. That's right now. You're yeah, right. right now. Yeah, your your days are off. That's right. You can go. You can go on Amazon and get any of his portraits. Any of his portraits that you want to see, you can get them off Amazon. If you have questions, go to the Amazon. He'll contact you. He has Facebook. He's got it all. And I, I think one thing's nice about it is you do a variety of different things. Oh yeah. It, there, it's just not one thing or another. It's it could be. Uh, we've seen sports. We've seen politics. We've seen um, just about religion. We've seen it all. What's for the future? What, 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 what is there anything in your mind that you want to do mm -hmm. that you haven't done? We're yet? working on that now. I got contacted by a gentleman, uh, Barry, who's just he's a really strong Christian, and I grew up Maronite Catholic. You know, Saint Ed's, mm -hmm. and. Um, so Barry says, Ray, you know what? We really should do a painting. And a lot of people don't believe it. We grew up with, we don't pray to Mary. We pray to, to Mary to pray for us. Mm -hmm. You know, you like me saying, is there anything wrong with me saying, Anthony, do me a favor, pray for me. No, there's nothing wrong right. with that. So they want to do a painting of the Blessed Mother and how is she viewed in every country, you know, Our Lady of Guadalupe, um, the Madonna in yeah. Italy, Our Lady, every country has a name for her. Correct. That, we, is, that is correct. And we wanted to do something that really is, it will become an educational painting. The challenge is doing a painting like the George Washington painting that's very simple. That Ron Johnson, the lead history teacher at Austin Town, uses that painting right mm -hmm. now as we speak to teach secondary education. That painting that's in the George Washington President's uh -huh. Club meets the national educational standards of what teachers teach seventh graders about President Washington, not the revolution in its entirety. Right. So so they they the superintendent said, let's let's see how this is working. Prior to that painting, the students average was C minus. Mm -hmm. Harvard University, Anthony puts out a study and says, people and students who look at allegorical paintings mm -hmm. that tell stories right. retain much, much more. It's a visual. It's a, it's a visual watching thing. a moving video right. or conventional book. Right? Exactly. So the scores went from a now they tracked it on Google uh, Illuminate, right. Google platform Illuminate, mm -hmm. which tracks the scores. They went from a C minus to a B plus, and the superintendent said, told me, "Ray, I'll take a B, B plus all day." I'm in the classic in the painting. If you look at the painting, the fox in the wheat field. The kids are raised there, looking back. Yeah. The second battle of Trenton. Yeah. The turning point in the path. The Battle of Saratoga, right. the turning point of the, the revolution. Right. You know, everything in that painting is what they teach Washington students. So they use that painting to teach, and, and the scores went to a B plus. And they're seeing, because they're seeing they're seeing a visual reference. Right. In this painting here, the Bible. Lincoln mm -hmm. used to read books to children. Yeah. Out of the Bible. One of them being the Bible. Well, there was also back in the late Depression. Uh, they were. It was. Uh, they signed the New Deal back when, when they had the depression. FDR. Yeah. They, I correct me. I hope that's the right term or the right time frame. But what I'm trying to get at is there was a group of women that were on horseback that would deliver books to people in Kentucky, and to get their trust, they would read Bible verses. Wow. So just an interesting little thing. I had a video on that that I posted online a while back ago. But just a, a little tidbit. But we but we look at. How long does it normally take you? This painting here took four weeks, under okay. four weeks. Because when I'm painting, I'll, how crazy is this? I watch Star Trek. Or, I love the History Channel. I love oh, the History Channel. Uh, right? I'm in it. a TV over my, mm -hmm. and I paint, and I'm, I, you know, I paint with the airbrush and paintbrush. Right. This, most of this was done with the paintbrush, the, the White House. It's I mean, it's very hard to it was, it was, detail. Sure, it was a lot of, the, the, notice, the, Anthony, the one light, the one light that's lit up. Yeah. Um, to represent how many hours was this guy tweeting at night working on <laughs> this or that or that you follow so yeah. so i mean it's about telling a story and and I, I don't paint i don't do shock art right i don't want attention you want a story i don't care about attention mm -hmm. if i wanted to do shock art i'm not saying i'm a good right. artist but i guarantee you that when people saw it they it would it would just it would it would imprint their memory for six months i don't do shock art about right me. right if you follow me, right. I do about I paint about humans, our mistakes, where we're going, what we're going to overcome, the challenges we face. I mean, I would love to do. You know what I'd love to do a painting of? 1921, what in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black mm -hmm. Wall Street. I mean, I just 
I look back at that. How they took World War One biplanes and dropped bombs on a district that was financially successful that were owned by by black by black owners mm -hmm. by African American a, a, a theater a, 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 a hotel and I just look at I just want to look at us I call us talking monkeys self included mm -hmm. self included huh? because that's all we are I mean it's a, we we really need to evolve I know how because that wasn't that long ago how how can you bomb our, and then take a Gatling gun from that was used in Flanders Field of World War One that we entered in 1970 that started in 1914 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and kill 300 and something people because of the color of their skin because they're successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have a Bible, right? Everybody has a Bible. Raise your hand, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's it say in the Bible? Man's created. Right. I've always fought my battles. I, I've never painted one painting about Ray Simon because Ray Simon's irrelevant. I've always do, done paintings about, you know, if you look at the Tuskegee Airmen, I had my paintings on display at the National Archives mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. I was with nine Tuskegee Airmen, and I have pictures of them. And I was with Captain William F. Hollerman II, who was 97 years old, and he looked at me and he said, you know, Ray, we didn't enter the war until 1943 because of the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. Remember the Pittsburgh Courier in 1941 put out a huge article, a double victory. Mm -hmm. It was a black newspaper. Right. A victory of abroad and a victory for civil liberties and freedoms back right. home. That's why a lot of a lot of black people became pilots. And they so he goes so they, they didn't enter the war till forty three because of the color of skin. Thank God for Colonel Lowe Parrish and Eleanor Roosevelt said you're doing this on the president's wife. You're doing you're so they stateside. He said they put us in the back of the trains while the German prisoner stateside that they brought back right. sat up front because they were. But you know, he looked at me and said, America's not perfect, but I'll hold her hand till she gets well. There you go. America's not perfect. Humans aren't perfect. We all need to hold each other's hands till we get well, till we evolve. These pilots become amongst the best pilots of World War II, amongst the best. And the painting I, I painted cap was actually the March 24th, 1945, 1600 mile bomb raid on the Daimler Benz tank factory. But it had Captain Benjamin O. Davis looking over the horizon as a P-51D Mustang is intercepting a Messerschmitt 109, mm -hmm. right? And as the B-17s are safely flying to their destination, but he's looking over the horizon at a civil rights movement yet to come. They were the trailblazers for Rosa Parks. They were the trailblazers for, for Ruby Bridges. They were the trailblazers for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They were before all that. They helped lay the path they weren't allowed to protest they weren't allowed to march you know what they mm -hmm. did anthony they did and they become amongst the best that they did those are the mm -hmm. stories that i fall in love with that's the america that i love despite her mistakes we all need to hold her hand until she gets well we just we need to move forward mm -hmm. and we're not yeah. well see we'll see what happens in the future one day at a time that's all i like to say oh i want to pull out the well, Ray. It was great to have you on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, at the end of each show, I like to have some fun with my guests. See you up for a little fun? Absolutely. Okay. I got a bunch of questions for you. It could be personal or professional. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's what your personal opinion is. So, first one, what's your best experience? Wow. That's a – never had that question asked. My best experience? Seeing my children being born. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Not, Art, artwork, professional career. No, it could be anyone. It doesn't okay. matter. Yeah. Okay. Best memory. Best memory is my childhood on the north side. Or as we grew up, you know, we grew up at north side. <laughs> Wait, 25 cents got you 10 cents to swim at north side pool and 15 cents for a Gary Queen. Oh, my God. Yeah, now, but now, we were now all look mixed. what it was. Yeah, we were all mixed. It was, you know, all of us. We were all mixed. If, if I die tomorrow, I can thank God. For where I grew up at, because a stadium of life, we sat in more than one seat, but more importantly, when you walked out of that stadium, there's seats you never sat in. Yeah. What's your best accomplishment? You know, I always say I have a long way to go because I don't really, I don't paint about me because I'm one of 370 million, but I think the best accomplishment is doing paintings like the Lincoln, mm -hmm. the Washington, the Crucifixion that, that are in that are there's one down the lincoln painting that kids when they get sworn in from right they stand in front of the painting and get right. pictures or the 
for the the biracial children. I have a picture standing in front of the seven foot Lincoln painting down at the. Those are those paintings will be a permanent beacon. Right. You know that courthouse has been there for a long time yeah. since eighteen oh something. Eighteen oh. They just got over a reservation. So these paintings tell beautiful stories. Mm -hmm. The ones there's I have a monument right out a granite monument of my artwork in Texas, right outside of Houston, mm -hmm. called Fields of Freedom. Those are the paintings that that will forever tell the story of us. And it's not about forget race Simon. Right. It I paint about all of us. You know, the Rhode Island it's Regiment. The it's the right. visual. The Rhode Island Regiment, the black regiment of the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War who Washington's whole view of slavery did a complete turn. Hamilton and Jefferson. Right. Hamilton yeah. got to push through the Continental Congress to get rid of slaves, and basically South Carolina said, "Anthony, if you get rid of slaves, we're going to have a we're civil war. Yeah, we're going to succeed from the Union." Well, yeah, then you know, you know, but what did Washington do? He put a government in place that in 1865, this man wrote, was able to do the Thirteenth Amendment and the journey. We're only on the five-year line. We should be on the thirty-five. We're not. But okay, who's your role model? Um. Wow. These are tough questions. Art, yeah, they are. Um, actually, I'm going to do this and put it in the art category. It would be Sister Alice Marie Morley, who, who, who just pushed me and pushed me, and and looked at my mother and just said, "You, you will send him to art school." Who called up Dr. Zona on the Bresna, um, the whole, and said, "Look, this kid has to has to go into art." Okay. Okay. So here's a question I like to ask, and I always love to hear what, what some of my guests have to say. If there was one person you would want to meet, past or present, who would it be and why? Oh, my God. I know one of my favorite, most interesting, he was extremely flawed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would love to meet Lincoln. Mm -hmm. But one person, because of my father, my, my father was in the 101st Airborne, June mm -hmm. 6, 1944, jumped out of a C-47 in the invasion of Normandy. Mm -hmm. But I bought, I just recently, it's a great cash question. Just recently, I just bought a 1938 radio this big. I'm getting it repaired, but I'm not, I'm gonna also put it a, just in the back, there's a lot of room in this little, right. I'm gonna put a Bluetooth in there because guess what I wanna play? Mm -hmm. My mother told me the stories when they were little kids on the east side on Lane Avenue. And on Sunday, remember Hawaii's six, seven hours behind us mm -hmm. or ahead of us, whatever. And Sunday after eating spaghetti dinner, they turn on the radio because all the neighbors were running around frantically. And what comes on the radio? One of my favorite people that I've always admired, even though he was flawed. Mm -hmm. Thank God for Eleanor Roosevelt, who was racially enlightened. Mm -hmm. But guess what I'm playing on that radio when it goes in this room when it's finished? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date that yeah. will live. FDR. FDR was at that that speech, that first. Oh, I got goose pimples. Look, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and, and because not because he was brilliant, because he led our nation through the most challenging times that she faced. I mean, you realize, Anthony, prior to December seventh, Time Magazine, which is my birthday. Was it? That's, there you go. <laughs> the day that yeah. did a whole thing of our cavalry, mm -hmm. and there were horses, and they had to take the negative and flop it to make it look like it was bigger. I mean, we were, but it, there's so many beautiful stories when Admiral Iruko Yamamoto, who studied mm -hmm. at Harvard, yeah. went in front of the emperor and says, Americans aren't going to fight. They're going to negotiate peace because they don't have to fight with them. They're just not fighters. They love drinking. They love sports. They love women. And, and I'm like, so, but if they do fight, what did he say at 3.30 p.m. on the Atagi? You remember? All the Japanese generals are celebrating at 3.30 p.m. And that's what he said. After all we've done is woken to sleep in giant and fill so, her with a terrible result. Yep. Because he went in front of the Emperor Anthony and, and said, said, listen, when you get a fight bar, real quick, I'll go, you, first you see how big he is, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he in front of the Emperor says they have 48 shipyards. Yeah. We're building a Liberty ship, a, an aircraft carrier, a Liberty ship every month. Yeah. They built, I think, four in one year. We built twelve. Right. How do you think we 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 defeated the Panzer and the Tiger tanks? Because we built twenty seven thousand mm -hmm. Sherman tanks. The Germans built sixty two hundred. Mm -hmm. you, you, it was the great arsenal of democracy has been awoken. So that's why when you say who's one of my 
people that I admire the most outside of Christ, who was passing out dead fish and Peter bread out of a small worker basket, um, FDR because he just he was just a great you know you know no matter how long it may exactly. take you know he was just he was just he was awesome. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. So, well, Ray, we appreciate your time and thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy. We hope you'll join us more down the road and with more episodes and more announcements to come. Please go to anthonyvspano.com and anything else, Spanning the Need podcast. Thank you. Good night and God bless. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.